The Barbell Retirement Plan in Action. Do, 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 do. PVC pipe trumpet. Do, 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 do. All right, first of all, we gotta make sure, man, don't make this harder than it needs to be. We want to keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. Look, I'm just a caveman. I don't get your crazy world of complex financial planning. I like it simple. I like, you know, hey, uh, First Sergeant, where do you want me to go? Well, not First Sergeant. Hey, Sergeant, where do you want me to go? Go dig, go dig that fox over there, Scanlon. You got it, sir. Well, you want to say, sir, you got it, Sergeant. Dig, dig, dig. Hey, Scanlon, we need you to put that three feet over there instead because that's going to make a big difference. Okay, dig, dig, dig. That's what I like. Just tell me what to do. Keep it simple, and I'll take care of it. But if you get complexity, it makes everyone confused. Confusion is satanic. Simplicity is divine. All right, so the beauty of the barbell. What's that uh, beard guy, a white, white-haired guy, Bob Burger, Bob Burger, something like that, who likes to eat hamburgers? I got no animosity towards that guy. First of all, though, I was like, st stunned. I was like, dude, you didn't know that there's capital gains and dividends on your Vanguard funds, your mutual funds? So I guess he sued Vanguard for, I, I just, oh, huh? that was weird. And uh, again, I don't have any hostility towards the guy. I'm just like, come on, man. I mean, because you got your white beard and stuff, obviously you're, I shouldn't say more. I was just like, come on. At some point, don't we got to put this on ourselves? I mean, we know in a taxable account, if you have mutual funds, you're going to have capital gains and dividends. If you have ETFs, a Vanguard ETFs, you won't have capital gains, but you have dividends. Why would that not be shocking anybody? I, I don't understand. But anyway, be doesn't matter. My hair's all messed up. Look at these pearly yellows. You know you. Keep it simple, stupid. The first thing when you hear the word kiss when it comes to me and my messed up hair, my pearly yellows and my thing is about to fall off here by nail you think i want to kiss josh i want to kiss josh look i'm taking baby if you were here 30 years ago maybe but i'm taking sorry ladies but i'm a guy i want to kiss josh you know maybe in a, in a different ball uh, arena i might have uh, entertained that uh diversity if you know what i'm saying <laughs> that was funny come on Get the stick out of your butt, man. Get the PVC pipe trumped out of your butt and just laugh. All right. So here we got a simple account. We got 500,000 schmackaroonies. We're going to take... We're going to take $25,000 a year off. That's a 5% distribution rate. All right. So you take 25% or you take 5% of whatever your account value is. It's just it's literally just that simple. If you, I mean, again, the 4% rule is based on the idea that you're going to take 20000 out in year one and adjust that with CPI each and every year. There's just That's just not based on any reality. I hate to say it. Again, no bashing of Bill Bangin or the Trinity study or all the provocators of this, but that is just not based on reality. It's just not. There's no basis to say I'm going to take 4% a year off and in, increase my expenditures with a CPI each and every year. It's just, it's, it's just not based on reality. So I just say, look, just take 5% of your off, all right, 5%. So whatever your account value is, take 5%, no big deal. Now, if your account value drops by, you know, freaking 30%, uh, then we're probably not going to want to take 5% off that year. I mean, we could take 5% off that year. That's whatever is, you know, 18,000 as opposed to 25, but that might not get the job done. So sometimes you're going to have to reach into deeper for sure. It's no big deal, man. Just taking 5% of your off. Sometimes you got to cut your belt, tighten your belt, man. There's no other way around that. That's a better, more realistic strategy than the 4% rule by far. Because it says, look, if my portfolio is up, I'm going to take 5% have more spending money. If my portfolio is down, I'm going to take 5% have less spending money. And if you need to have that money, you're going to have to tip into your principal a little bit. No big deal. All right? that's, just, that's why you save the money to spend it. All right, so in this case, we got simple. We got VTI, that's a Vanguard Total Stock Index, all right? And I think VTI, what's VTI doing right now? Let's take a look in terms of dividends. So let's see what we got here. All right, so we're going to go over here, boink. So here's the, uh, actually, let's start here. Federal money market, Vanguard, is 5.3. 5.3, look at that guy. So here, we got 250000 in the money market, 5.3%. That gives us 13250 a year, which is... A little bit more than half what we need right there, which is freaking awesome. Uh, what's VTI doing? Let's take a gander. Shall we gander? Yes, we shall gander. VTI is paying 1.47. That's just a dividend. All right, so 1.47. Let's do this real quick. So you can see the uh, 
that right there with a 1.47% dividend yield, that gives us $3,600. So we take the $3,600 of income plus a 13,000 of income on the, uh, on the money market. That's, that's what 17,000 bucks alone right there. Just that alone. So we're already at what's that two thirds of what we need. Well, I've been touching the principal. We haven't, we just take the income that already gives us two thirds of this 25,000 bucks. But I don't, you, I don't like that necessarily. And the reason is because even that's too complex. I like it simple. So what we do in this regard is we say, okay, we need the 25,000 bucks. All right. At the end. So this is going to start the beginning of the year, always on January 1st or January 8th. I don't care, but you take in one fell swoop. You say, what account has gone up? Now, I just say reinvest these, reinvest these. I just like to show you that right now, the interest rate that we're getting is so high, so high that gives you almost, I mean, a, a, over 50% of your income needs just on the interest alone. Again, I don't even mess with that. I said, okay, I'm just going to say I have 250,000 in my account on these sides right now. I need, now we're going to go forward a year, all right, because we've already got the money locked in for year one. So year one, we already have our 25,000 bucks sitting in cash. All, and when I say cash, I don't mean this. I mean, literally a bank account. All right. So we want to say at the, at the beginning of the year, we got money sitting in cash. And what happens is we're going to wait to see what happens next year, the, the following year. So at the end of 2022, all right, we say 2023, we're retiring. We have one year expenditures already sitting, 25,000 bucks already sitting in our bank account. We're already covered for that first year, which is why I always say build cash uh, the two years before retirement. We already have enough cash to cover our first year. Does that make sense? So 2023 is our first year of retirement. At December 31st, 2022, we wanna make sure we have at least one year of cash. All right, now what happens? Now we're in December 31st, 2023. That cash is gone we spent it. Now we need another cash infusion to cover us for 2024. Everybody with me on that? So now it's December 31st, 2023. We just spent our last dollar cash. Now we're like, man, I need cash for next year. Where do I get that money from? It's simple, dude. If this guy is up, you pull from there. Always look at stocks first. If my stocks went up, I pull it from there. If the stocks went up 10%, I pull it from there. Stocks went up 3%, I pull it from there. Stocks went up 20%, I'd pull it from there. That's all there is to it. If the stocks have gone up in 2023, again, it was December 31st, 2023. I'm looking at my account statement. I say last year, I started with 250 in stocks, 250 in cash and money market cash. At the end of 2023, if this guy is more than 250, and again, we're reinvesting dividends. I just want to be clear there. We're reinvesting cash. I want to be clear there. We're just reinvesting that. Just remember that. I'm pulling it from this account. If the stocks go up, I'm pulling it from there, taking the cash from there. I don't even care what percentage is. I just want to take the gains on the market. Stocks go up 5%, we're taking it from there. Stocks go up 10%, we're taking it from there. All right? That means you could even go below 250 in here. Don't care. Don't care. It's just to keep it simple. Did you make money in your markets on the stocks last year? If the answer is in the affirmative, you pull the money from there. All right. Now let's just say it's the exact opposite. We'll say stocks went down. Stocks went down 4%, 10%, 22%, whatever. You take it from here. I guess just as like that. Pull the money from there. It's literally that simple, dudes. It's literally that simple. All right. So now let's go for a year. Hold on a sec. Last year, stocks went up 5%. So it went from 250 to whatever 5% was, 263 or something like that. I can't remember. I pulled my 25,000 from stocks. So now I'm down to 237, all right? So stocks went up 5%. I needed $25,000. I pulled it all from here. So now I'm below my initial threshold of 250. So what, dude? All right, so what? What happened on this side? This is why Jerome Powell for president, dude. My cash went up to 264. I started with 250. I got 13,000 of cash. Now I'm at 264, 263, something like that. So my total portfolio now is right back at 500,000 bucks, about 499 to be perfectly honest with you. All right. I need another 25,000 bucks. Maybe I need more this year. Maybe I need less. Don't care. Yes, this portfolio is higher. 
than what I started with. This portfolio is lower. Doesn't matter. You still take it from the stocks, even though we're below our initial point at 250. If the stocks go up 3% again this year, we still pull it from here. You just keep doing it. So let's go back. We need $25,000 because our portfolio is back worth 500,000 bucks. We're going to put five, we're going to pull 5% a year off that. If this guy is even up 3%, so let me show you. All right, let's do this. It goes up 3%. Now we're at 244. We got to pull 25,000 from 244, so minus 25, pulling that money out, which will get us back to, oh boy, was that 219 or something? What is 225? It's a point, that's no, so two, uh, three, yeah, yeah, 219. So now we're at 219. Let's just assume we got another 13,000 of interest on this guy. We're at basically 278 roughly. And we'll just use that for example. So now we're at 219. All right, but we've taken $50,000 from here. We started with 50, or 250. We've taken 25,000 twice from this guy. Now we're at 219. 219 was uh, $31,000 down, but we're nowhere near $200,000 because the market went up. At some point, this will go down, the market will go down, and then we just tap into here. So what's happening is you're getting your portfolio a lot more conservative and safer by you pulling your money out of stocks for the short run if the stocks go up. Now, at some point, 10 years from now, you're like, look, I'm down to Seventy thousand dollars in stocks. I don't think it will be because then how many years do we have where the stocks up five percent, three percent? Not many. Stocks generally go up pretty big. In fact, the Vanguard will show you. There's a great study of Vanguard, which I'll talk about in my new coming course that I'm working on right now on investing 101, where they show you that the, uh, the, the when do we get back to normal rate, rates of return? And the stocks very, very rarely give us between eight and twelve percent rate of return is usually significantly lower, significantly higher. But be that as it may, right now we're down to 219 because we had a five and a 3% rate of return on the markets. We needed a full 5%, so we took it from here. We're still above where we'd be if we got zero rates of return, but we're below where we started off at 250. No big deal, because we got the this right here to give us the, uh, the cushion. So now we're at two, 78 plus 219, I don't know what that is. Let's do a calculation, hold on a second. So 278 plus 219 equals, we're at back at 497. Look at that, dude. This, I just, having these high interest rates, I, I cannot, I cannot stress how freaking awesome that is. I just don't get why people don't get this. It's nuts to me. It's the, the best time to retire right now. Anyway, so you just keep doing that. Now, at some point, you know, you say, well, my stock market might be down to 80,000 bucks. Okay. I mean, you make adjustments, dude. Don't give me a break. You know what I'm saying? If this is worth, you know, 500,000, this is worth 80,000. Yeah. At some point you switch it out. When? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, at some point you don't want to be 20% stocks, 80% cash. I don't know. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, still getting, if you're still clocking 5% cash, it's awful hard to overlook. That's a fact. I don't think we will be. I think the interest rates will be going down here probably in the next year. I don't know. Could be wrong. I loaded up some more EDV yesterday. I bought some, not much, 100 shares of EDV. So I'm loading up on my EDV, waiting for the time for the markets to adjust where the interest rates level. And then I would think EDV would take off like to the moon, like the Neil, Michael and the boys when they traveled 25,000 miles an hour. That's kind of weird. 25,000 miles an hour. But it was just sudden, Josh. They didn't do it all at once. That makes it even weirder. And yeah, they're like, you know, puttering along. You know, okay. And then, if you buy that, I got some ocean from property in West Virginia. Talk to my friend, John Denver, who's not from Denver. Kind of weird. Anyway, so the point being is at some point, yeah, you have to make some adjustments. I mean, that's okay. You say, look, I'm way too bond heavy right now. Bond more cash heavy, I mean, whatever. But for the time being, it's, this is just an easy strategy to implement. And right now is the best time ever to do it. Anyway, 
Hope this helps. Be on the lookout for my course. Probably going to be done in a month or so. It'll be a, I'm writing a book too. You won't be able to, if you buy the course, you got to buy the book too. They don't come hand in hand because the book is going to be very uh, elaborate. Well, the course is great, but the course is for visual and won't be very expensive, but uh, I can't wait. I actually deleted, uh, I had my videos on bonds and I freaking deleted them yesterday. I was like, oh no, that's like, I can't get them back. I'm like I got to redo my bond video. Ah! My bond video was like 30 out, 30 minutes of content it took me like two hours to produce. I'm like, oh, frustrating being a content creator. This is tough life, dude. Tough life. You know, this is so much harder than digging ditches or putting roofs on houses. That's for sure. God bless, man. I am happy to be here and I'm glad you are here too. All right. I love your thoughts. We'll see you.